David Medani is an economist at Capital Economics. Great to have you with us. Good to be here. So let's start with it. What is a good way to measure this? And we talk an awful lot. And people mm-hmm. wonder and wring their hands. And in some cases, their investments, their lifetime savings uh, is at stake here. Right. It's not a small subject. Uh, is there? Is it rent to home prices? Is it income to home prices? Are these good measures of value? Well, I think the best measure in Canada to use is the house prices relative to household income, or some measure of household income, yep. income per capita, for example. Uh, and that certainly has shown a big run up in home prices. So certainly I share the concern about overvaluation in Canada, particularly in the major cities, Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, by my sort of calculations, housing looks be about 30% overvalued at the national average. So, But again, that, one has to be a bit careful because that's really in some sense a reflection of uh, Vancouver and Toronto prices, whereas most of the other country home prices aren't anywhere near as high. So it's sort of a situation where the, the averages in Vancouver and Toronto are kind of skewing the national yes. national average. So the majority of Canadians obviously don't have home values that are worth anything close and, to what Vancouver and And Toronto. don't need to be spooked by, uh, you know, a home in Winnipeg is not in bubble territory due to crash uh, or anything like that. But if those two markets did fa- face a 30% correction, and um, we've seen this before, mm-hmm. could, would it trigger a broader reaction? In other words, might we get uh, a, the kind of housing-led recession that we've seen in the past, even though it's contained to such small areas? Yes, quite possibly, because they are obviously very large markets where a lot of people live. So, yes, there certainly is the potential for that. Um, one of the reasons why I think the Vancouver and Toronto markets have sort of continued to you know, hold up basically is because rates have kept coming down. And so that's sort of made housing at the margin affordable for that sort of marginal home buyer. Um, but my concern is elsewhere in the country, we're actually seeing signs of softening. Obviously, Alberta, with the drop in oil prices, that's really starting to fall now. But where, where do you put the kind of rent uh, equation in here? We know we don't have the kind of rental housing stock right. in yeah. some big cities that we historically have had on a ratio basis. Um, um, does that is that a problem? Does that actually create bubble, bubble-like behavior? The, the price to rent ratio, the problem with using that in Canada is the rent data is very bad, yeah. basically. And that's why some of the numbers, when you look at the price to rent ratio, come out really, really high. And the economist obviously has flagged that up and others have flagged that up. So that's why I put more sort of emphasis on the house price to income ratio to gauge long-term valuation. So one of the things is we, you know, we're a day from, you know, you know, less than a day from a federal budget. Uh, mm-hmm. This is in the equation. We've seen many, the World Bank worried about our housing market. Uh, we know that the, the finance department has looked at it and tried to think about ways to cool it over time. Right. Where does it, would it factor in? If you were writing a budget, where would concerns about a correction in housing and possible contraction that that might cause mm-hmm. fit into here? It's difficult. I mean, the government has tried to use macro prudential measures to slow down the, the more concerned markets like Vancouver and Toronto, but we continue to see average prices go up in those markets. So I would sort of argue that those policies have basically failed. But the big reason why I think they've failed is because mortgage rates keep coming down. And certainly as a forecast, whenever I see the banks lower their mortgage rates, I simply just push out the forecast, right? Because obviously right. a forecast has to be based on key factors like that. Um, but it's difficult. The policy makers are in a difficult situation. They are obviously they don't want to tap on the brakes too hard because obviously that in and of itself could trigger the correction that everyone fears. So... I think they're doing it in sort of baby-like steps. So. Is there a typical catalyst for a housing market correction? No, I wouldn't say there's a typical catalyst. Obviously, for a country like Canada, a drop in oil prices would be a, a pretty good trigger, and obviously we're seeing that in Alberta. Yeah. Um, obviously, if rates were to go up, long-term rates to go up, obviously I think that would be bad for affordability in markets like Vancouver and Toronto. Um, so I think the housing market now is sort of almost super sensitive to to interest rates right now. And that's why I'm a bit concerned because on one hand, we have extreme overvaluation. On the other hand, we have extremely low interest rates. So there's really nothing normal about the current situation in these major markets. Are you optimistic overall about the state or direction of the Canadian economy? Not with the, not because of, not right now, not because, because, of, well, because, because of the slump in oil prices. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are basically in denial about what this means for the economy. Uh, a lot of the economic models that policymakers use um, don't really capture the potential fallout because oil, you know, 20 years ago wasn't that important to the Canadian economy. So model simulations really aren't capturing what's happening right now in the economy. So we expect the economy to slow down this year. And I think, um, you know, the numbers that we're going to see in the budget tomorrow are going to be a little too rosy, I think. All right. We're going to leave it there, David. Great to have you here. Thanks for being here. David Medani, economist with Capital Economics.